Okay, so we are continuing the notes from yesterday. So on something like this, we are going to take the number portion and prime factor it. So we're going to prime factor our number. Well, will two go into it? Three will go into it. And then, there we're done, right? Okay. So it's nine is three times three. I want you to leave it in its expanded form, not condense it to exponents, okay? So this is three times three. Now, what does x to the fourth mean? X times x times x times x times x times x. Well, there's four of them. I lost track. Okay. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to put those, that expanded form of that exponent underneath the square root. So I took that, what we're going to take the square root of, and I expanded it underneath the square root. Okay, Zoe, come on. Now, just like we did back here, we're going to circle pairs. Yes. So, we have a pair of threes. Ooh, then I get to keep going. I have a pair of X's and a pair of X's. Hmm. So every time there's a pair, when you take the square root of it, one of them comes out, right? So the square root of three times three is three. It comes out of the square root. The square root of X times X is X. It comes out of the square root. And then the square root of x times x is x. It comes out of the square root. There's nothing left under the square root, so there's no square root in our answer now. Now we do want to condense this back and use exponents. So this is going to be 3x squared. So how about something like Do that one for me. Hmm? It's similar to them, yeah. Okay, so first thing we need to do is our number part. We need to write it as prime factors. We kind of have it back a couple pages, but let's just run through it. Two, 32, can I do two again? 
and two again. Whoops. Two again. Two again. Okay, so how many twos do I have? Six. Six. Expand your a squared and your b squared. So a squared is a times a. b squared is b times b. Now let's go and circle your pairs. So circle them all. And let's pull one from every pair out. So we've got two times two times two times A times B. And let's multiply this all back together. Number parts, we want to actually multiply them together to actually get just one new number. Variable parts, we'll write them as exponents, but that's Two times two is four, times two is eight, AB. So something like this, a square root symbol, like in our order of operations, is a grouping symbol. So that it means if you see a square root in your problem, it's the first thing you want to do is that stuff that's under inside the square root before you actually perform that operation. So in this case, before we can do anything, we need to add underneath the square root we'll get 16. Now we can do the the factor ladder but do you recognize this as a perfect square? Yeah, 4 times 4 is 16, right? Once, If you recognize something as a perfect square you don't have to do the factor ladder thing. So that answer here is just 4. And what I just said really even goes back to this problem. If you recognized that 64 was a perfect square, there's no reason to do all that factoring. You can jump straight to 8. Mm -hmm. What? How would you get it? How would you get it? Because if you recognize that 8 times 8 is 64. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you would probably just need to expand your A's and B's. Okay. Rashad? So uh, how do you find a perfect square for like, let's say, 120? Do you find the square root of 120? It's a perfect square. Well, it's not. So 120 is not a perfect square, okay, because it there's nothing multiplied by itself. A whole, there's no whole number multiplied by itself that equals 120. I'm going to say hold that thought because we're going to do something like that next week. Okay? Um, so how about something like this? Now this is different than the one up above. What makes this different? They're separated. Okay, so in this case, you want to evaluate each of them and then add them together. So they are both perfect squares if you recognize them. And then kind of going back to the question I had, what if you don't recognize it, but you kind of have a hunch that it might be? If in your calculator, like that 121, say, it's like, 
Gosh, I think 121 is a perfect square, but I'm not sure what it is. You hit the square root button right here, and then 121, and equals, if it comes out to a whole number, it's a perfect square, right? Like if you had the square root of 120, is that a perfect square? No, because it's a decimal. Okay, so this is, what's the square root of 5? I mean, what's the square root of 25? What was the square root of 121? So our answer here is 16. Okay, so how about something like this? And we want you to estimate the root between two whole numbers. So if you try doing the square root of 53, you find out that it's not a perfect square. It's like 7.2 something. But what this is wanting you to do is say, okay, so what numbers is the answer between? So what are your perfect squares on each side of 53? So we can kind of look down this. So it would be like between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. Those are your two perfect squares that would be on either side of that. And then, but what is the square root of 49? Seven, and what is the square root of 64? Eight. And then kind of looking back at the decimal that we got, that it's 7.2. Yeah, it is between 7 and 8, right? Your assignment today kind of has like a lot of like random little different things, so... What if you have something like, they want you to do the square root of 130. There's these little squiggly equal sign, which means approximate. And they say round two decimal places or round to the nearest hundreds. So in this case, what that means, when you see something like this, with that like approximation thing, it means use your tools. Use your calculator. Hit your square root, 130, hit equals. So I get 11.401. So do I keep the zero or do I bump it up? No. Keep the zero, right? Because the next number is below a five. So it's 11.40. I wanna look at one more thing. What should be your assignment? No, it's on Canvas. I just, I don't want to use a whole new page for one little assignment, so I'm just going to move up to this spot. So what if you have negative square root of y to the 8? Negative square root y to the 8. Oh, there's two more I need to do. 
So I just want to expand this. Leave that negative out front. But there's eight Y's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got it. And then what do I do? Pairs. So how many pairs do I have there? Four. So this is... There's still a negative out front. This negative is just coming on down. So the answer here is negative y to the fourth power. What if you have something like this with a negative under the square root? Then you would put negative y's on the inside. This is more like it's saying negative 1 times y to the 8th, which is really what this one's saying, too. There's understood ones here. Square root of negative one. Nope. Try. Right. Nope. Square root of negative one. Do it. Nope. Not there. Not there. You can't do the square root of negative one because nothing multiplied by itself equals negative one. Think about it. Positive one times positive one is positive one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. There's no way to get a negative one, right? So here, you are putting, there's different things, we can put not a real number. It's not part of the real number system. Now, you want to know something really crazy? What is the answer? Well, when you move into Algebra 2, you find out there's something called imaginary numbers. It's not real, it's imaginary. We really do call them imaginary numbers in Algebra 2. And we can, there is a way to get a solution here, but we'll save that for later. <laughs> you may now stop and do your assignment.